Hello, hello, my name is Rhonda, but my friends call me Ro. Welcome, party people. Hold My Purse is a show that is all about putting you smack dab in the center of your life with some seriously badass self-care. Just like your purse holds your essentials, self-care is your constant companion and there when you need it. It's about time we put ourselves center stage and rock that self-love like nobody's business. My mission is to forge an unapologetic army of self-care warriors who rock their own world first. So smash that subscribe button because FOMO isn't in our vocabulary and you don't want to miss a moment of this self-love fiesta. Now, let's get this party popping and show the world that self-care is the ultimate superpower. All right, my fabulous friends, what's up? Let's get this self-care party started, right? So today I am going to dive deep into a topic that's juicier than gossip at a celebrity party. Yep, you guessed it, relationships. Now, you might be thinking, how can self-care improve relationships? I need more details. Well, I'm here to spill the tea and share all the juicy details. You know from the first episode that self-care is more than just bubble baths and face masks. Although, those are pretty fabulous. It's a rock-solid pillar that holds up our emotional well-being and in turn our ability to rock those meaningful relationships. So, today I'm going to shine a spotlight on how self-care becomes the secret sauce in improving and sustaining our connections with others. So you're probably thinking, wait, how does self-care impact connections? Well, let's take a step back because I'm glad you asked. We know relationships, whether they're romantic or with family or friends, they are an integral part of our lives. They bring us joy and support and connection, but they also can be a source of stress. Oh my gosh, conflict and challenges. In today's fast-paced world, it's so, so easy to get caught up in the hustle and bustle. Often, we neglect our own well-being, which eventually takes a toll on our relationships. I can't stress this enough, y'all, and I'm going to say this like a million freaking times. When we take care of ourselves, we're better equipped to meet the emotional and practical needs of our loved ones. It's like that old saying, you can't pour from an empty cup. When we're stressed, burnt out, or neglecting our well-being, we're not fully present. And by us not being present, there's no way we can be supportive in our relationships, right? That's going to be a challenge. Picture this. Self-care is your secret weapon for epic relationships. Oh, yeah. It's like the glitter on the cake. It adds that extra pizzazz when you prioritize self-care. You're tuning up your mental and emotional engine so you show up in relationships like a freaking rock star. Think about it. When you're stressed, exhausted, or feeling down, you're not exactly fun to be around. But when you had a good old dose of self-love, you're beaming with positivity You're more patient and compassionate and understanding, making it a blast for everybody to be around you. Remember, self-care makes you more self-aware so that you can communicate your needs clearly. It's like having a language for your feelings. Your partner or friends, they don't need to play detective. They get you. They understand you. For instance, let's take a date night, for example. Instead of feeling pressure to impress, you can relax and be yourself and enjoy the moment. Your partner sees the real you and you're forging a genuine connection. So I also want to talk about how self-care can help in conflicts. Self-care can make you a conflict ninja, y'all, because you know what? You remain level-headed, you find constructive solutions, and rather than escalating drama, you're level-headed. So here's the deal. When you take care of yourself, you become a magnetic, charming, and emotionally intelligent relationship ninja. Because you know what? You're fun to be around, your relationship soar to new heights. I don't know what to say, y'all. Get your self-care groove on. 
We all know that one of the critical aspects of a successful relationship is communication. When we're attuned to our own emotions and needs, it becomes easier to recognize and empathize with the emotions and needs of our partners or friends. And this understanding is the cornerstone of effective communication. Self-care is like that magical elixir that turns you into a communication wizard and an empathy superhero when it comes to your loved ones. You see, when you're practicing self-care, you're more in tune with your own emotions. You know when you're feeling calm, frazzled, or hangry. Hangry is like hungry, angry. And this self-awareness is the key to effective communication. Imagine this, you've just had a stressful day and your partner wants to talk. Now, if you've been caring for yourself, you can unapologetically say, hey babe, I had a rough day. I need, I need some downtime before I can chat. Boom, no misunderstanding, no hard feelings, right? Dr. Romanelli notes in Psychology Today that when you self-care, you are taking care of the whole system because a better you means a better us. The two of you are interdependent and therefore self-care is a relational win. Let me say this again. Self-care is a relational win. Now, let's chat a little bit about empathy. When you're taking care of yourself, you've got this abundance of positive energy. You're not drained and grumpy. So when your loved ones need a a listening ear or shoulder to cry on, you're there with a heart full of empathy. Picture a friend sharing their struggles, right? And instead of just saying, you know what, get over it. You say, I'm here for you. What can I do to support you? That, my friends, is empathy in action, and it it strengthens, strengthens your bond. So, in essence, self-care is like a Jedi mind trick for communication and empathy. It makes you understanding and compassionate and just an awesome freaking partner, friend, and family member. We know, we know, if you're in a relationship, more than likely... You're going to have some conflict. I mean, that's just a natural part of it, right? Full stop. So how can self-care assist in navigating those inevitable challenges? So from episode one, we know self-care encourages self-awareness and self-regulation, which essentially is constructively managing conflicts. It helps us stay calm, cool, and collected during disagreements. So rather than being overwhelmed and defensive, you are chilled. And when we prioritize self-care, we often have a clear perspective on what truly matters in a relationship, making it easier to compromise and find that common ground. Self-care can turn you into a conflict resolution ninja. Like, I love knit the word ninja because it just makes me feel like, like, whoop, 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 about to get busy. But as I say, okay, I digress. Self-care can turn you into a conflict resolution ninja in your relationships. It's like having a superpower that comes in handy when things get rocky. Picture a typical conflict like someone left the dishes in the sink or forgot to buy milk. Now, low self-awareness might make you get all hook mode, which is not cool, y'all. A University of Florida study noted that low, self, low self-awareness often results in being driven by self-defeating personal biases, prejudices, beliefs, assumptions, and narratives, most of which are unspoken and often unconscious. If you consider the iceberg analogy, others see what is above the surface, Tension, silence, withdrawal, stress, exhaustion, anger, and disappointment. But they don't see what's underneath the surface. Fear, sadness, vulnerability, powerlessness, self-doubt, and other beliefs that drive us to honestly protect ourselves. But when you're nurturing yourself, you're self-aware, and you've got a level head and a sense of perspective. And you can handle anything like a pro. 
Because you know what? You know how to take a deep breath, stay calm, and approach the issue with empathy and understanding. You can say, you know, hey, babe, I noticed we're running low on milk. Can you make sure to grab some the next time? Boom. Conflict averted without tears or tantrums, right? Conflict in a relationship is like um, like a game of tug of war. Without self-care, you might just keep yanking on that rope, turning it into an all-out battle. But, 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 when you're practicing self-care, it's like someone handed you a pair of gloves and suddenly you're more skilled at playing that game. So, now you can take a step back and you can say, hey, boo. Let's ease up on the rope for a second. How about we find a better way to make this fun for both of us, right? Conflict resolved, and now you're holding hands. Self-care also can act like a referee, right? It reminds you to take a time out when things get heated. This pause allows you to collect your thoughts, to cool off, and to approach the issue later when emotions aren't running so high. We know self-care also builds uh, your emotional resilience, right? It's like wearing a mental armor that shields you from getting emotionally crushed in an argument. So instead of taking everything personally, you can see the bigger picture and find solutions together. Now, let's not forget self-care helps you also recharge. So after a disagreement, you can you can come back, apologize if needed. Yes, I said it. Apologize if needed and move forward without holding any grudges. In the end, self-care is your golden ticket to relationship harmony. It's like a mediator that steps in and helps you both find common ground turning conflicts into opportunities for growth and understanding. Self-care turns you into a conflict-conquering, peacemaking superstar, right? It's your secret weapon, your secret weapon for keeping the love alive. Now, I think I said this in the first episode, but the benefits of self-care is so far-reaching, When one person in a relationship practices self-care, it can have a ripple effect. Now, let's chat about how taking care of numero uno, that would be you, can send positivity throughout your social circle. It's like being the sunshine in everyone's day, right? And here's how that works. Think about it. When you prioritize self-care, you're like the Energizer Bunny. You're pumped, radiant, and bursting with good vibes. And you know what? That energy is freaking contagious. Your partner notices and thinks, wow, you're on fire today. I want some of that. Self-care can be a game changer and positively influencing your partner's friends and family members. So, for instance, self-care as a partner booster. So, imagine you've been you've been treating yourself to a weekly yoga class or solo nature hikes. You come back from these activities recharged and centered and radiating a zen vibe. Your partner can't help but notice your newfound serenity. And soon they're inspired to join you for yoga or embark on a weekend adventure. And that strengthens your bond because you now have a shared activity that helps promote well-being. And y'all are together. Now, self-care as a relationship Zen master. Your friend notices when you are meditating and journaling and your friend calls you frazzled and your calm, cool and collective voice on the other end is the voice of reason. So they start to adapt these practices and, you know, even develop a gratitude journal. 
And guess what? Y'all become a sanctuary of emotional support for each other. Now, when it comes to your family, self-care as a family harmony ambassador helps you develop more patience and understanding version of yourself. So when shit happens like the dishes are put away, your family members see you being more peaceful and they take cues from you. And by taking those cues, they're able to understand better, like being cool headed is more important than being hot headed. Right. So as your self-care journey continues, you start attracting positive people too, right? And experiences in your life and you become a beacon of positivity and frankly, a social butterfly. And your loved ones see you thriving and making new friends and exploring opportunities and they want a slice of that life and they become more open to meeting new people and exploring hobbies and saying yes to adventures that they may not have done before. In essence... Nurturing yourself is like being a walking, talking bundle of positivity, and it infects your loved ones with good vibes. So keep up the self-love, y'all. You're making the world a happier place. It's no secret, unapologetically, I encourage everyone to make self-care a priority. It's not selfish. Is a vital component for sustaining healthy, loving relationships. Remember, when you care for yourself, you're better able to care for those you love. My mama used to say, if I ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. Let the church say, amen. All right, y'all. So this is the part of the show where Aria, aka the little human comes on and she talks about whatever is on her mind. So this one is actually a test that we did a few months ago and she came with it. So I thought I'd I'd keep it and use it. And by the way, she has her aunties in the background. They're kind of hyping her up. Take a listen. What I want to do. Mm-hmm. And what I want to do with the children at school. I want to, and I want them to leave me alone. <laughs> like Connor. <laughs> She's shopping, Daddy. <laughs> keep going, keep going. Keep and going. I hate Connor. Oh. Hey. She said thumbs oh. down. <laughs> what Connor do? He does everything he doesn't leave me alone with. Oh. He throws stuff at me. So last time he did throw a stick at me in the face. And then he kicked me in the nose because he wanted to go on the slide first. And what did you do? And then I said, back up. Oh. I said, back up, move out my way. Oh. All right, that was Aria. I hope you enjoyed that segment along with her her aunties as her hype crew. Um, that's it for today's show on how self-care can positively impact your relationships. Let self-care be your ride or die companion on this wild journey we call life. Slay those challenges, conquer those obstacles, and always keep your self-care purse within arm's reach. Until next time, my fabulous friends, remember to put yourself first and to hold my purse.